Coming up, a Norfolk baseball team goes to the majors. Area emergency managers game out a mega hurricane and zombie invasion. And do you have big plans for the weekend? Well, so do crews at the downtown tunnel. These and many more stories from Valentine to Bayview coming up on Norfolk News Now. Welcome to the August edition of Norfolk News Now. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Thanks for joining us. Living in the Mermaid City where there's water, water, water everywhere means you've got to drive over and through bridges and tunnels to get around. One of the area's big crossings is the downtown tunnel, and that's where the big changes start this month. The Triple N's John Linka has more. You know that good old downtown tunnel connecting Norfolk and Portsmouth? Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news? It's getting some much needed work. The bad news? For all of that work to take place, beginning August 9th, the westbound crossing will be closed from 8 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday morning for 25 weekends up through May of 2014. Then the closings will shift to the eastbound tube for 42 weekends. Yay! Being a Portsmouth resident and working in Norfolk, obviously this is going to impact my life in kind of a big way. Because of that, Elizabeth River Tunnels, the group in charge of the project, put on two information sessions about the upcoming work. One session in Portsmouth and this one in Norfolk, giving folks the chance to learn about all the improvements that will take place at the downtown tunnel, which, at 61 years old, was due for some upgrades. Oh, I drive through those suckers. I know they could use some work. Structural protection with the fireproofing, for example, it's, uh, it's meant to protect the structure of the existing facility. Uh, exhaust fans that are capable of handling uh, the exhaust of a 100 megawatt fire for cleaner air. New LED lighting, which is brighter, more energy efficient, lasts longer. You know, different things are being undertaken at different times. So, um, you know, for example, eastbound, when we, go, when we switch to do the eastbound work, we'll have to take out all those ceiling tiles. The tunnel we're working on now, the westbound downtown tunnel, the, the ceiling tiles were taken out by VDOT back in 2011. They also got information about alternate routes like the Midtown Tunnel, Jordan Bridge, Gilmerton Bridge, and High Rise Bridge. Everyone here agreed that it probably won't be a fun short-term future for folks who use the downtown tunnel, but a necessary evil for long-term safety. If the tunnel structures themselves are improved, that's a good thing. Um, I would just like to see it go as smoothly as possible. We'll have a safer tunnel that's going to last a little bit longer for us. Yes, quite a bit longer for us. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linko. For the rest of the summer, we'll be on hurricane watch pretty much all the time. Is Norfolk ready for a direct hit from a major storm like Hurricane Sandy or Katrina? Last month, the Department of Emergency Preparedness came together with regional emergency management leaders to try and find the answer to that very question. The Triple N's John Linka has more. Remember Hurricane Isabel back in 2003? 7.89 feet of extra water in Norfolk. The 1933 hurricane? Norfolk's highest water level ever at just over 8 feet. Just think what 2012's Hurricane Sandy and her 13 feet of water would have done here. When you look at 1933 as our storm of record, the 13 foot storm surge goes way beyond that. So there were, we'd experienced some severe, some sick, significant flooding. Thanks to the Virginia Modeling and Simulation Center, we have an idea as to what 13 feet of water would look like in the low-lying Southampton roads, particularly Norfolk. Just about the entire region would be under an unimaginable amount of water. I'll quote Mike Tyson. He said, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. Well, these types of storms, that'll be a punch in the face. How would the city of Norfolk prepare for that? This is an opportunity to, to talk through a what-if scenario. What if we got hit by Hurricane Sandy like they did up in New York, New Jersey? And not just Hurricane Sandy, we're taking lessons learned from Hurricane Trina as well. Joined by City Manager Marcus Jones, Police Chief Mike Goldsmith, and Fire Chief Jeff Wise, emergency management personnel from Norfolk and throughout the region came together for a day of learning about how to deal with the aftermath of the unthinkable becoming a reality. The focus was on the weeks and even months after being hit by a storm like Hurricanes Sandy or Katrina. The immediate response and recovery, that's always the sexiest piece. That's what folks really focus on first. But once the storm comes and goes, the fires are put out and lives are saved, 
there's still a long process after that. And that long-term recovery, long-term housing and sheltering, all the human services components, uh, and just the rebuilding, uh, certainly in terms of a, a disaster like that, that's going to take a long time. They also got some first-hand accounts and lessons from Sandy Recovery volunteers. One lesson learned was uh, that the Crisfield City government um, broadcast to the community by radio that they wanted everyone who had had water in their homes to hang a white cloth on the front of their home. This became extremely important. FEMA was in the community doing drive-by assessments. Uh, so they were able to drive down a street and just see house after house with the white cloth in front, knowing then the number of affected homes relatively quickly. While buildings and structures would need fixing, they're all replaceable. The residents of Norfolk are not. That's the most important part is looking out for the folks within the community, the homeowners, the businesses, I mean just the families who make up Norfolk and, and making sure that they get what they need to recover. The big picture takeaways from this group huddle? The whole Team Norfolk concept. Again, it wasn't just us, it was working with our community partners, a unified effort, one plan, communicating with each other, leveraging resources, and, and again, working as a community. And the other takeaway is the importance for everyone to, to be prepared, to have a kit and have a plan and stay informed. Everyone has a role in preparedness because we're all in it together. Something to this level, like a Sandy or a Katrina, we haven't seen that in our lifetime. But as long as we have the structure, as long as we have the relationships that we have, we'll be able to make it through anything that comes our way. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. To learn more about how you can better prepare yourself and your family this hurricane season, just log on to the Norfolk Department of Emergency Preparedness website at norfolk.gov backslash emergency. Speaking of major emergency events, are you ready for the zombie apocalypse? The Team Norfolk Preparedness Town Hall Series is a new monthly meeting to discuss a range of emergency topics from hurricanes to severe weather and yes, even zombies. Each month, community professionals will walk you through emergency situations and give you tips for preparing your home or business for disaster. The whole purpose of the Town Hall Series tonight and throughout the year is to talk about the hazards that we face as a community and, and what our plans are, how we would respond, regardless of which level of government, which sector, uh, homeowners, churches, businesses, all of us working in, as a community to respond to the various threats that we've seen uh, occur over throughout the nation this past year. We've seen Hurricane Sandy, we've seen tornadoes, we've seen bombings, we've seen active shooters, we've seen, uh, well, actually we, see, we saw an asteroid in, in Russia as well. Here's a snapshot of upcoming preparedness town halls that you can attend for free. Hurricane Preparedness, August 15th. Hazardous Material Incident, September 12th. On October 10th, Zombies, Apocalypse, and Other Health Emergencies. And on December 5th, Severe Winter Weather. For 2014, the lineup for the free preparedness town halls include Cyber Threat and Preparedness on February 6th. Business Continuity, March 6th. Tsunami, It Can Happen Here, April 3rd. And Be Prepared, Be Informed, Be Involved. May 8th. All events are free to residents. Just visit norfolk.gov slash emergency for all the upcoming meetings. Eleven players from a Norfolk baseball league recently headed to New York City to take part in the Junior Reviving Baseball and Inner Cities or RBI Classic. Hosted by Major League Baseball, the fifth annual Classic featured eight baseball and four softball teams comprised of youth ages 11 to 12 in a friendly 36-game tournament. Norfolk's RBI athletes were selected from RBI leagues nationwide to participate. After their games, players got the thrill of attending and participating in ML be All-Star Week events, all compliments of Major League Baseball. The Reviving Baseball and in Inner Cities program is a youth outreach program developed by Major League Baseball to increase participation and interest in baseball and softball among underserved youth. In addition, RBI encourages leadership and teamwork. Norfolk's RBI League is comprised of more than 350 youth ages 5 to 18 throughout the city. Kids in Norfolk recently got the chance to get outside and check out a brand new camp experience put on by the Norfolk Sheriff's Office and Norfolk Public Schools. The Triple N's John Linka recently threw his camera on his shoulder and set out for camp. It's not a bad way to spend an afternoon in a canoe on the waters of Norfolk. 
It's all part of a new summer camp for kids put on by Norfolk Sheriff Bob McCabe and the Sheriff Bob McCabe Foundation. Partnering with Colonial Coast Girl Scouts and Norfolk Public Schools, Camp Apasis is five one-week camps for middle school age kids in Norfolk, giving them plenty of things to experience besides just canoeing. Oh, we do archery. Aim, and let it go. Woo, right in the middle. That's what I'm talking about. Volleyball, go swimming, canoeing, and arts and craft. And the girls, they do stuff like um, be a front post. What we're trying to do is just teach uh, skills uh, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's arts and crafts, but also life skills and, you know, talking about uh, emphasizing right and wrong and, and uh, you know, the importance of education, the importance of respect, the importance of uh, looking people in the eye when you're talking to them. And the kids have their favorites. Art is my favorite because we can make, we can make, we can do strings and we can make the strings out of stuff. Archery. Let it go. Good job. It's my first time trying it and I just think it's fun. A favorite of the adults? Seeing all these kids getting outside and having fun with volunteers from the Norfolk Sheriff's Office, exercising and being productive. That's what it's all about. And you know, you got some of the parents that drop their kids off and you know, the, you know I've gotten feedback that the parents are just so thankful because they, they don't know what they would do you know, without them. And plus the other thing too is it, it's a Sheriff's Office camp so they know they're gonna be safe. They don't have to worry about you know something happening to them and you know it's just, it's just nice I, when I grew up different generation but there seemed like there was always things to do and uh, you know it doesn't seem like there's as many things to do anymore on the cheap it seems like everything costs money and so it's nice to be able to provide this through, uh, through my foundation I think he really helped us a lot because I think he knew that instead of being in the house doing something we should be outdoors being active doing something if you in the house bored and you don't want to do anything and you don't have nothing to play with, you can just go to the sheriff camp. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linka. Beginning September 1st, 2013, the city of Norfolk will remove the question on the city's job application related to an individual's criminal conviction history. Norfolk's decision to ban the box removes the perception that a criminal history automatically disqualifies an applicant. Under Norfolk's current hiring practices, criminal history does not prevent an individual from being hired. Criminal history is evaluated on the gravity of the offense, the length of time since conviction, and whether it is applicable to the job. The criminal history question will remain for certain positions including but not limited to public safety and those involving the care of children, the elderly or disabled. As part of the hiring process, the city conducts national fingerprinting, background checks and drug screenings on all new employees. There's a good chance that most of you out there enjoy reading. There's also a good chance that most of you do not like to lug around a bunch of books. Well now, if you have a computer, laptop, iPad, or Kindle, you can get your favorite books from the Norfolk Public Library downloaded right to you. The Triple N got a quick lesson from Norfolk Public Library's Elizabeth Woodard. If you're looking for an ebook, you're just gonna go to the Norfolk Public Library website look at the catalog that's in the center of that website page and hit click here to go to the main catalog. From the main catalog, you're just going to go to ebook search and click on that. This takes you without any words, phrases, titles or author descriptions into all of the options for ebooks and ebooks only. Notice that it shows the option only set for ebooks. I could put in a search term or I can just hit search to go ahead and move to all of the ebooks that the library offers. On the results page, you'll see that the ebooks are all offered with this icon here so that you know that the format and all you're going to do is click on online content to move to the platform for OverDrive that houses all of our ebooks. On the borrow screen for OverDrive, you can open up your categories if you choose to make another search or close it with the menu button. You can look at your own personal account using the account button. You can get help from OverDrive using the question mark. You can begin a search again, keyword, title, author, subject, series, whatever it is you choose to use with the data entry line and the magnifying glass or 
you can use the advanced search, which will set perimeters for your search. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that you have the formats that are available to you listed. If you need a Kindle book, you need to find a Kindle book. If you're using some of the other devices, you can use an EPUB book. If you want to just open up your book on your computer using your browser, you can use Overdrive Read. It shows you the subjects, it shows you the copies available. This screen also gives you the option to move to commercial sites if you should choose to buy the book now. And it gives you the opportunity to add this book to your wish list if instead of checking it out right now, what you want to do is put it on your own personal account wish list. You can borrow the book on this screen. If the book is not available, that option will not come up borrow. It will come up place a hold, which you can do. And when the hold becomes available, it will email, the system will email you and you have to get the book within three days. You can also change, right with this word here, change the checkout limit from 14 days to seven days. I'm gonna go ahead and click borrow. And that takes you to our login screen. You'll need to enter your library card number and PIN number. Your login has taken you to your personal account page and it shows all of the books that you have checked out and what the disposition is for each book. It shows your bookshelf. It shows, shows any holds you may have placed. It shows anything that's on your wish list you've collected. And under settings, you can have the opportunity to change from a 14-day checkout to a 7-day checkout. The book will go away when the terms are expired. Your book will just go away electronically. Back at the bookshelf, you'll see that you have the opportunity to download the book. When you click that, it's going to ask you to select your format. If, again, if you have a Kindle book, you need a Kindle, Kindle format. And there is EPUB for most of the other devices. You also have the option to select Read, which will download the book just to your browser. If you've changed your mind at this point, you can go ahead and return the book now. Once you've downloaded or opened the book for Read, that option becomes available only on the device that you have downloaded to. So if I click Download Now, and I select EPUB because I'm on a computer right now and that's what will read that. It's going to open up, after I confirm, it's going to open up in my reader software. When the book is downloaded to Adobe Digital Editions for a computer, it will show the book cover here and you would click through the pages on your computer this way. But if that's not your preference and you want to download to a, devi a mobile device, this is the way your account screen would come up and you would see all of the books that are available for you to download. These are books that I've checked out. So I have some that are yet to be downloaded. If I want to download it to this device, I hit download now here. Again, I pick my format. I confirm that. And it's going to automatically open in the software. And you just click on the book title and begin to read the book. Each of the mobile devices offer options to be able to view the book, and uh, this is a lot of the popularity of why ebooks have come about, so that you can change the size of the font, you can change the light behind the screen, you can also bookmark your pages, and keep notes on the book that you're reading. The book will expire automatically according to the terms that you have set up. If you've decided that you want to return the book on your own, you simply go back to the Overdrive Media Console where your book resides and you click on the option to For more on Norfolk Public Library's ebook classes, browse over to npl.lib.va.us. When we come back, the one number you need to know to get your city issue resolved. A new 3D theater at Nautica's brings nature alive. Plus, see why sailing the Elizabeth on the American Rover gets all hands dirty on deck. It's easy and safe to roll together on Norfolk's roads. 
This is one of Norfolk's new Sharrows. Sharrows remind motorists to slow their roll and treat bikes like other vehicles. Bikes have just as much right to the road. If you can't pass by more than two feet, slow down and wait. They also remind bicyclists to know their role by traveling with traffic and obeying all signals and signs. It's up to all of us to share the road because we roll together. Welcome back to the Triple N. Centera Norfolk General Hospital is one of America's best. The hospital is ranked nationally in cardiology and heart surgery in a recent usnews.com report. The hospital is also high performing in eight other specialties. Centera Norfolk General Hospital is a 491 bed general medical and surgical facility with nearly 25,000 admissions in the most recent year reported. Its emergency room had more than 65,000 visits. Do you want to get in touch with the city about something going on in your neighborhood that isn't quite right or just need help with finding information about a city service? Then pick up the phone and dial 664-6510 to talk to the friendly folks at the Norfolk Cares Impact Center. Good morning, Norfolk Cares Impact Call Center. This is Janie speaking. How may I help you? It's a single point of contact for residents seeking information about or requesting service from the city of Norfolk. So when you call into the city of Norfolk, you would have your call logged into the system. If you have a question, that question would be answered. Or if you wish to speak to a specific department, we would route you to that specific department. We also take online requests for your inquiries, concerns, and complaints. And you don't have to give your name. Through Norfolk Cares, citizens can request a city service, obtain information on city services, or receive an update on a previous request for city service. Norfolk Cares staff may make a referral to a specific department if their expertise is needed. Anyone can contact Norfolk Cares by dialing 664 6510 Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. And after Labor Day, the Impact Call Center will take calls one hour earlier. Or on the web, you can quickly complete the citizen request tracker at norfolk.gov. Would you love a chance to get hands-on when it comes to sailing up and down the Elizabeth River? Well, the Triple N's John Linka takes you aboard the American Rover for a unique sailing challenge. Watch your step, buddy. All aboard the American Rover for a field trip. We offer uh, field trip programs for a lot of the local schools and out-of-town schools. And um, there are a lot of schools that don't do the field trips, so we offer a public field trip cruise uh, where the general public, small camp groups, or homeschool kids could, uh, can come out and join us on, a, on, a, on our field trip program. And she is a true sailing vessel. Led by Captain Brock Smith, once a week throughout the summer, the American Rover departs from Waterside and takes middle school age kids on a 90 minute field trip at a cost of only $9 per child on a cruise up and down the Elizabeth River. The city of Norfolk will be to your right hand or starboard side. We're coming here to with our binoculars so we can see what um, what all kind of stuff is in the ocean. And I like it here because I get to see all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff like the history of ships. Ships are designed to carry a lot of people and a lot of supplies. First real shipbuilders were the Egyptians. The ships, how they build them, were, were used by manpower and some of them also had sails. How to tie knots. Right over left and then left over right. That is perfect. All right. How to raise the sails. Hand it's over hand like this. Go ahead and pull straight down. A lot of them don't even understand that the sail is not just a piece of decoration, that it actually catches the wind and propels the boat. The higher it is, the harder it is. And they even got to learn about all the electronics that help guide the ship. All right, take a look at this now. This is the radar. This is how we navigate if it was dark and foggy out so we wouldn't hit anything. The big draw? getting to take control of steering the ship. It was pretty much a good chance. Usually people aren't usually allowed to steer, and it's one thing that it's a good thing to learn and good ability to do. Let's turn the rotor to starboard. Starboard would be to your right this way. It was fun. You got to steer it. I know if when I get older, I want to drive a car. It's going to be exactly like driving a car, but you're on the water. Oh, yeah, driving on the water. Another experience, along with waves, from the wake of other boats. I'm getting dizzy. All in all, a full sailing experience. It's an hour and a half uh, program that crams a lot of good information, a lot of fun in for the kids. It's just great to be able to, uh, to interact with, with the youth of today. For Norfolk News Now, 
I'm John Linka. The Nauticus Theater has a brand new viewing experience that really brings the natural world to life in 3D. Wild Ocean is the name of an action-packed giant screen documentary exploring the interplay between man and the endangered ocean ecosystem. Filmed off the wild coast of South Africa, Wild Ocean reveals the economic and cultural impact of the ocean while celebrating efforts to protect marine resources. The film celebrates ocean life. Wild Ocean is included in regular Nauticus admission. Nauticus will also introduce new 3D films throughout the year. For more information, visit nauticus.org. Each summer, Norfolk Botanical Garden hosts numerous special outdoor exhibits. This summer has been no exception. These great pieces of art aren't plants or flowers like the rest of the garden. In fact, they're made of glass. It's all part of the garden's 2013 outdoor exhibit. It's a glass sculpture exhibit called Reflections of Nature. Created by Craig Mitchell Smith, Reflections of Nature is a collection of glass sculptures made exclusively for the garden as part of its 75th anniversary. The 30 sculpture embellish locations throughout the landscape. The pieces are really interesting because they're not blown glass. Um, he actually actually uses a kiln. Um, he forms the pieces and then puts them in the kiln and that's how they they come out so spectacular like this. Many of these pieces of art will be available for sale via the Garden Gift Shop once the exhibit wraps up in the middle of August. By the way, there's always new and exciting things to see at the garden. For additional information about the 75th anniversary events, visit Norfolk Botanical Garden website at nbg75.org. That wraps up the August edition of Norfolk News Now on the Triple N. Thanks for watching Norfolk's Neighborhood Network for all things Norfolk. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Take care of yourself and your city and celebrate life daily.